Have you ever been placed in a position where you are forced to do something you wished you never had to? Circumstances in life cause us to make drastic decisions that we might end up regretting. But for the sake of preservation of life, Sometimes we have to let go what means the most to us. Sometimes it's not even your own fault that caused all this, but persons around us. Jacob is faced with a decision that could bring him to his grave, but he had to make the sacrifice. It's like Yeshua, Jesus, who gave himself for the sins of this world, but he had no sins of his own. The famine got worse in the land Canaan, and Judah has stepped forward to take responsibility for the next journey to Egypt. One he and his brothers wished they never had to take. However, Simeon was still locked up in prison, and if Benjamin, the youngest brother, was not on this next journey with them, they believed that they would be in serious problem. Judah pledged that he would take the responsibility of keeping Benjamin safe and bring him back home in one piece. Jacob realized that he had no other choice but to let Benjamin go. So they brought the best fruits in their land, balm, honey, spices, myrrh, nuts, and almonds, along with the double the amount of money they brought before since they found the money they used to pay for the corn previously in their sack. It was obvious that these brothers have changed. They were willing to take the risk of going back to Egypt because Simeon was there. When Joseph finally saw his brother Benjamin, he did not hesitate but told the ruler of his house to bring them to his home and prepare a meal for them. Joseph knew that his dream was unraveling before him. All eleven brothers had to bow before him. Can you imagine the fear that the brothers were experiencing? Being brought to the man's house who they were first accused of being spies, plus their money that was returned in their sacks. He must have planned to lock us up as thieves, they thought. So they tried to explain to the steward of the house what transpired before on their first trip and how they found money that they paid for the corn in their sack, and they did not know who put them back. And they have brought it back again, along with more money, to buy more corn. The steward told them not to worry. Your God had given you that treasure in your sack, and he released Simeon, who joined them at Joseph's house. They were well taken care of. Even their feet were washed and animals given food. That was forgiveness in action. And Joseph understanding the purpose that God has placed in his life. Joseph accepted that the Lord had his hands in all that he had gone through. Think about your own life. Could it be a purpose in your life placed there by God while you are going through or had gone through those earlier encounters and experiences? 
Was there something in you that God wanted to drive out? We all need fixing in one area or another. The brothers gathered all the present to present to Joseph. And when Joseph entered the room where they were, the scripture said that they all bowed before him. The dream that caused them to envy Joseph, the dream they tried to shatter, to stop, to make sure it did not come true. Can you relate to this? Are your dreams being hindered in any way? Have you been encountering a fight? Let God fight for you. Joseph knew all that was happening. If he had any doubt about his dreams up until this point, I am sure those doubts would be erased by now. When Joseph saw them, his focus shifted to the second dream. So he asked about his father. Joseph knew that the next stage of his mission was to see his father and his family were to come to Egypt and bow before him, whom eventually would take care of them throughout the rest of the famine. The children of Israel had to go to Egypt. Joseph had to go before them to prepare the way. Just as Yeshua came and prepared the way for us so we can have access and join in fellowship once more with our Creator. He has gone to prepare a place for us just as Joseph was in Egypt preparing a place and a way for his people to survive through the famine. When Joseph's eyes beheld his brother, his mother's son, his bowels yearned within him. In other words, his emotions were out of control. He could not hold back the tears anymore. So he ran into his chamber and he wept. Why he wept? We may assume that he missed his brother. All the years he missed out of his life as a big brother from the same mother. Maybe Joseph was just happy that his brother was alive and well, knowing how evil his other brothers could have been to him. Can you imagine Joseph alone having all those thoughts? And the brothers had no clue even up to this point that it was the same Joseph that they mistreated so badly over 13 years ago. Whatever purpose God has for you, not even the enemy, the devil, can stop your purpose from being fulfilled. If we remain in the hands of God and allow his will to take effect in our lives, no one can stop your purpose. No one can stop your dreams. So Joseph refreshed himself and took control of his emotions. Sometimes we just have to take control of how we are feeling at times and allow God's will to take effect in our lives. When Yeshua Jesus felt the anguish in his bowels and he, he pictured, imagine what he was about to go through, he turned to God, his Father, and said, Not my will but thy will be done. We just need to allow the Lord to let his will be
be done in our lives. So Joseph allowed the brothers to sit in order from the youngest to the eldest. And they marveled at this. How did this man know the order in which we were born? And Benjamin was given five times more food than the others. And they all drank and felt good. If only they knew who this man was. That's it for now. Another chapter a day. Genesis 43. Thanks for taking this journey with me thus far. We're almost at the end of the book of Genesis. Bereshit. Not my will, but thine be done. Prayed Jesus. Oh, may this same prayer be mine. Every day When this robe Robe of flesh That I wear Makes me falter Guide my steps Hold my hand all the way let us pray father in heaven yahovah god we shabak your holy name mighty god as we come to the end of another chapter i pray father that if we ask for things that we should not ask for if we pray for things selfishly, if we ask for ourselves and not for our neighbor, we pray, mighty God, that we will take this veil, that you will take this veil from our eyes and allow us to see clearly. Joseph understood his purpose. Joseph was seen clearly. Joseph knew he had to forgive his brothers for what they had done to him because it was God's will for him to go into Egypt so that he could make a way for them. Great God, sometimes when our situations are placed before us, all we can see and feel God is the hurt and the disappointment and, and all the negative emotions that we are going through. That's all we can see and feel at the moment. But I pray, God, that you will give us the will and the desire, Lord, to look beyond what we have gone through and see you. See your purpose in our lives. Great God, I pray, Father, that through your Holy Spirit, God, hallelujah, will be able to put aside all those negative encounters that we have gone through. It's not easy and flesh would say otherwise. Oh God, we would want to defend ourselves and to get justice. But great God, we leave everything in your hands. Father, we give you the battle that is before us. Oh God, we know sometimes when we want to fight on our own, oh God, we mess up your plan. But God, we give our battles to you today. Father, help us not to look at now. If Joseph was looking in the moment, then he would miss, hallelujah, this glorious moment when his dreams began to unfold before him. Father God, continue to have mercy upon your people because it's not easy living in this world, hallelujah, all the things that are thrown at us on a daily basis. But God, we give our will to you. Father, let your will be done in our lives, hallelujah. 
Oh, great God, have mercy. And so, Father, we place all our future battles in your hands. God, you are our Father. And you're a Father that knows how to give good gifts unto your children. And so, God, we rest in your promises. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Yeshua's name we pray and give thee thanks. Amen. God bless you. Until next time, walk good.